Good day. During this period of sheltering in place, I want to provide you, the good parishioners of Holy Trinity Parish, a brief glimpse of the many ways in which the parish is still open, surviving, and in some ways thriving. Allow me to begin by presenting an image. It is the Chinese character of the word crisis offered to me once by a Chinese student the day after September 11, 2001. Processing the previous day's tragic event, the student went up to the board and drew for the class the character. It was a stick figure on top of what looked like a waterfall. As the student explained, below the figure is danger, but in front of the figure is an horizon of possibilities. This Chinese image was helpful for us after the tragedy of 9-11 and may be helpful now as we face the ongoing fears and disruptions of the coronavirus pandemic. Yes, there is danger all around, but there are also possibilities. Some of these possibilities are actualized in the way in which you, the parishioners, and our pastoral team have responded. In so many words, Parishioners continue to engage creatively, compassionately in parish events and programs. And your responses, coupled with our staff's energies, are enabling our parish to be both innovative and sustaining. Allow me to provide an overview of some of them. First of all, in the area of worship, there has been considerable amount of creativity exhibited under the direction of David Pennington and Kathy Deschardins, and supported by the communication efforts of Corelli Pollan and Karini Jackson, a series of substantial online prayer, prayer services have been offered. These include morning and evening liturgical prayer, a tape Sunday liturgy, and daily homilies. As you may know, my fellow Jesuits, Brothers Campbell, Kelly, Hawley, Earl, and myself alternating these responsibilities. Also, as a way of fostering a communal sense of worship, we have developed a blog titled Cura Virtualis, which highlights and easily locates some of our worship events and community voices. In addition, this week we introduced a prayer wall for intercessory prayer. Look for the prayer wall on our homepage at trinity.org under quick links. Turning to the area of Ignatian spirituality and prayer, coordinated by Catherine Heinhold and Martina O'Shea, spiritual direction and retreats have continued, as have our parish's training programs in spiritual direction and the giving of the spiritual exercises. Also, to enhance a greater sense of community there have been the weekly guided imaginative contemplations on the Sunday's Gospels, as well as praying in sacred space on Thursdays and Saturdays. In addition, this past Saturday, a group of us participated in a morning retreat on themes related to the 50th anniversary of Earth Week and Pope Francis's encyclical letter on the environment, Laudate Si. In social justice, our director, Ashley Kleck, reports that in response to the pandemic crisis, parishioners have made and supplied face masks, made grocery runs, and written cards for parishioners. In addition, Ashley developed a phone tree whereby several dozen volunteers have made check-in phone calls to more than 1,700 of our parishioners. Because of this innovative design of the program, Ashley participated in an Archdiocesan webinar, which features the program for other parishes to adapt for their communities. The parish also continues to care for the poor and vulnerable, locally and globally. These include concern for migrants along the U.S.-Mexico border and in the D.C. area, and the continuing support of our sister parishes in El Salvador and Haiti. Judith Brousseau, the director of our religious education, reports that our sacramental programs for baptism and marriage continue. In addition, more than 80 catechists 
are able to engage through social platforms in weekly outreach and online sessions with almost 600 students enrolled in our program. Judith and our faith formation staff continue to meet virtually with catechists and room parents. Meanwhile, members of our LGBTQ plus group continue to meet. And Kester continues to guide dozens of participants in our RCIA program. And on Monday evenings, Ann coordinates with Ashley Clip and Liz McCluskey a series about women in the Bible titled The Great 50 Days of Women's Wisdom that highlights the period from Easter to Pentecost. Can you believe that we're almost halfway from Easter to Pentecost? Principal Kevin McShane informs me that our Cyber School at Holy Trinity School is meeting the challenges creatively and quite competently. The students and their teachers are working very well together, and the ongoing encouragement of parents has been outstanding. In the area of youth ministry, our coordinator, Rebecca Horstere, continues this vital ministry through virtual platforms to meet with young men and women preparing for confirmation. We are planning to reschedule the confirmation masses for September. Rebecca also has been holding weekly virtual prayer and social gatherings for our high school students. Catherine Heinhold reports that our young adult community, known as the Yaks, are supporting one another through social platforms that enable them to build solidarity through a weekly faith sharing group, a monthly liturgy of the word, a book discussion group, and last but not least, a weekly happy hour. The Yaks are also planning an online afternoon retreat in May. I would be remiss if in this state of the parish report I did not say something about being stretched and stressed financially. Our finance director, Chris Keogh, and our development director, Rock Schuler, have been working diligently trying to balance our expenses with our income. As you may have suspected, with the closing of the church, we are experiencing a significant shortfall in contributions. My colleagues and I are indeed grateful for the financial contribution of a large number of you. It is your donations that are turning possibilities into realities and helping us meet the financial needs of our 31 employees of our parish. In closing, I want to thank you for continuing your support and your engagement in our ministries and programs, ensuring that, though we may be physically separated, we preserve and maintain the wonderful spirit of our community and the heart of our church.